yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, really appreciate uh, appreciate the time and the opportunity, as I said. Um, and, uh, you know, love to talk with you about HydroSat and our work with FreeFlow, and then certainly, you know, take, take your questions and, and hopefully we can make this a good, a good discussion. Um, so uh, we are HydroSat, we are um, a satellite data and analytics company, uh, and our mission is to take on uh, climate change from space. Um, uh, if that sounds big and bold, maybe we'll just take a step back, a, a big step back, um, all the way to, uh, uh, you know, what does it mean to be a satellite data and analytics company? Uh, and as a satellite data and analytics company, we are in the business of looking at the Earth from space. Since about 1960, the amount of carbon in the atmosphere uh, has nearly doubled, and we are starting to see not only the impacts of that doubling in the data, uh, but also in our daily lives in the form of extreme weather events. And this ecosystem impact has real consequences, uh, real consequences both for our communities and for our economies. You know, we believe as a company uh, that you cannot manage uh, these impacts if we cannot measure them. Uh, and at HydroSet, as mentioned, we are measuring the temperature at a high degree of accuracy using thermal infrared data from satellites. And so um, thermal infrared, you know, gives us that ability to remotely measure, remotely sense uh, the temperature of the surface of the earth, in this case, uh, crop fields, uh, but really we can measure uh, temperature, temperature change um, of anything, whether it's uh, in industrial activity or agriculture or forestry. Um, so this thermal temperature data uh, that we're collecting from satellites helps directly measure crop stress. And here, I'll give you uh, another example. You can clearly see the difference in temperature between a dry field um, and an irrigated one. With all of this, as you would imagine, uh, uh, governments around the world, both NASA and the United States uh, uh, and European Space Agency have invested significantly in satellite capabilities to measure temperature of the surface of the Earth because um, this data uh, has, you know, such critical applications in water management and environmental risk monitoring uh, and, you know, many, many other fields. But the problem today is there is a significant data gap uh, in infrared data and thermal data in particular. So the only thermal satellite data that's currently available uh, is from government sources. However, that data is either very low in resolution uh, or very infrequent. And so at HydroSat, uh, we are with a commercial comp, uh, constellation and with a fused data product and analytics product, uh, we are filling that resolution frequency gap with high resolution, high frequency data uh, so that we have this information everywhere on earth uh, on a daily basis uh, and at a scale that, that is relevant, that matters for, uh, for measuring you know, risks to agriculture, risks to uh, communities, to critical infrastructure um, and to companies. No, that's really helpful, thank you. Uh, one question I, I want to ask as well uh, is just, You've you've had success raising multiple follow-on rounds for the company. Um, in particular, this last one was a little bit eye-opening, just because you know the doom and gloom that's in the um, yeah. media market, which we always have to be careful of, you know. But um, I'm just curious, why do you think the company has had the success it's had uh, in in attracting follow-on investment into into in, 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 into your vision? Yeah, uh, that's that's a that's a great great question. Um, you know, I, there's there's a there's, I think there's several factors. I think one, um, you know, I, I I've got to believe that what we're doing, our kind of our mission, um, is something that resonates with a lot of people. You know, many investors, whether they're strategic investors, whether they're um, uh, you know traditional venture investors, you know, they can connect. You know. I, I'd like to believe that anyone can connect, you know, our mission back to, um, you know, these really important trends that we're seeing that are impacting, um, you know, utilities, insurance companies, uh, agribusiness companies, food growers, uh, governments, and, you know, and see and get excited about the opportunity to 
address a lot of these challenges uh, using using space um, uh, as the high ground. So that's that's one piece of it. Um, uh, you know, I, I think the other piece is we've again we've been really fortunate to attract you know good people um, and good investors um, you know around that mission, and you know, that all has a, a tremendous snowball and momentum effect, uh, which has led to you know new customer opportunities, uh, which has led to you know new products uh, that we've developed to help serve uh, the same you know need in, in new and different ways. And all of that has, you know, built traction, uh, which, you know, we've been able to, um, you know, to demonstrate the time, uh, even, even a, a short period of time. Uh, and that, you know, has supported, you know, investment. And then very, very tactically, um, you know, we have a great, a great, you know, team and group of investors that have helped us, you know, connect with others. And that, that is the, the basis of fundraising, uh, particularly in, uh, a challenging market environment is you know, getting, getting, you know, uh, you know, getting the message out, connecting with, you know, other other people as well. And and free flow has been. I mean, you guys, Kevin, you have introduced us to many investors uh, over the last year that have subsequently joined our, our later rounds. Uh, and so I think the power of that, you know, network uh, and the power of, you know, the people who are coalesced around the the company and the vision. Have some questions from the audience actually, which which are always great um, about the business itself. Uh, some questions on competition. Um, you know, how do you distinguish yourself? Uh, uh, examples of customers that might use the data. Um, for what? How might you price that? Um, and just uh, how do you think you're revenues are going to scale over the next few years, you know, and, how, and, you know, does that mean, is this your last round of financing? Do you think you'll have additional rounds? Just, you know, just if you could dive into some of the more business oriented uh, facets of the business, I think that'd be very helpful. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So I'll take competition, you know, first. Um, so there are other companies from a satellite perspective that are looking to do, you know, looking to provide the type of data that, that we are providing. Um, we're the, probably the furthest along, I'd say definitely the furthest along commercially of any of those. Um, and interestingly, uh, those other companies that are looking to do thermal infrared data from space are all based in Europe. Um, uh, and so, you know, the, the most, you know, the, from a technical perspective, the type of information we're providing from the satellite portion of our business, you know, our closest competitor would be a company called Constell R. Um, now there's a big difference between Hydrosat and really most of the other satellite companies um, uh, that are out there, which would include the big, you know, the big names like Planet, which is really getting in, starting to, um, you know, get into other areas. Um, but uh, big difference is we are uh, vertically in integrated in that we collect data from satellite, but we also, you know, process it and provide an analytics layer, analytics solution. So typically in the earth observation market, you know, companies will do one or the other, but you know, it's very um, unique to have one company that's doing both. And the reason is, and, and you know, this is, you know, where I think we're, we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, and I, I think in a, in a very positive way for our customers, a company like, you know, um, uh, Planet or Maxar, one of the radar companies like uh, uh, ISI, you know, they're putting out data and they're saying, okay, we're going to generate this data and then whoever wants to buy it, buy it, whatever use case you're going to, you know, use it against, you know, please use the data for, for what you, uh, then you have analytics companies that don't generate their own data that say, okay, we're going to get really, really into this very specific, you know, mission or very specific, you know, uh, market need. And we're going to solve it using an analytics solution, and we're going to buy data from wherever uh, in order to, uh, to you know, uh, allow that solution to run. And so what we've done at Hydrosat is we have aligned ourselves with, you know, a very specific market need as our core, and that's in uh, water stress and agriculture. Um, and we have built both an analytics solution, and then we're building a data set 
that will support that. And so that's what I mean where we're, we're, we're vertically uh, we're vertically focused, um, but also integrated a little bit across the value chain. And so uh, other companies that are competitors are, are not doing that. They're either providing only the satellite data or they are um, they don't have any of their own satellite data, but they're providing uh, just sort of an analysis type solution. Well, you know, one, you know, maybe this is the concluding question. Just, um, I'm just curious because it seems like you're really well positioned as a business, but I was curious how you view Hydrosat being different from some other startups, you know, culturally, you know, what's your mission, um, you know, what drives your teams? Uh, because being in a startup is not an easy thing to do, right, day to day. So I'm just, if you could just comment on that as a as our concluding statement. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So um, uh, yeah, I um, kind of touched on a little bit in, in the question itself, but uh, culturally, and it's great, we just last week we had a, had a big, you know, all company offsite uh, because a lot of our team is is distributed in different different places in different parts of the world. Um, but you know, everyone on the team I think is really excited and really you know joined the company for that uh, that vision of you know helping Earth manage its most valuable resource, uh, which is water, and that's sort of our long term uh, you know raison d'etre, uh, if you will. Uh, now in the shorter term, there's a lot of uh, you know, great business that we can build, you know, selling uh, satellite based intelligence, you know, solutions in critical infrastructure, food security, you know, to government that allows us to get there. But I think that's a, that's a, a, a mission that a lot of our team members, you know, got really excited about. And as a result, you know, we've been able to, to, you know, attract some, some really awesome, awesome people. So, you know, people like or had a product, mirror that, you know, was, um, you know, pretty high up executive at, um, at Bear uh, uh, in St. Louis. Uh, you know, people like Josh is, you know, um, top of his field at, at JPL. Uh, people like, um, you know, Scott that have worked at other remotes and companies that, you know, had a lot of capital and were doing, you know, pretty cool things, but, you know, didn't have that sort of, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, mission orientation, you know, in mind and that, 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 um, you know, clear, clear, you know, market need and um, societal need that, you know, we're focused on. And then we see it too with our, with our engineering talent. I mean, we have pulled a lot of really talented engineers on the satellite side out of uh, the defense industry uh, where, you know, and I used to work in the defense industry. So I have, you know, I, I, it's a great, great source of talent, very good companies there. But a lot of those people, you know, said, hey, you know, I've been working on, you know, defense programs for my entire career. Uh, I have an opportunity to take what I've learned as an engineer and apply it to climate change and these sort of big societal issues that, you know, are facing the whole planet, you know, and for generations. Uh, and that's very attractive call, you know, and so as a result, we've been able to take a lot of really, really, you know, good engineers um, and data scientists uh, from, um, you know, from kind of big legacy defense contractors. Uh, and that's all helped us, you know, build, build our team. And so, you know, I'd say on a whole, like we tend to, we've, I think almost half, maybe 40% of the company uh, has PhDs, um, which is awesome, very humbling. Uh, to work in that environment, um, but everyone's really excited about what we're doing, uh, and everyone's you know super smart and very motivated. And so, you know, I think that that certainly helps us, you know, uh, helps us grow and it's helped us, you know, stand apart. 